Hi, my name's Dave, and I've spent most of my life outdoors here in Canada's western frontier. I believe one thing to be true. Outside is therapy. It's where we both reconnect and disconnect. I hope you'll come with me as we build, explore, and repeat. My name is Dave, this is Blind Man Outdoors, and today we're going to do a little bit of fishing. We're at the Adventure Factory. We have closed the shop down uh, for the holiday season, which I am a little bit excited about because it has been non-stop here since January 2021, and although it is a little bit quieter here today because of the holiday season, we do have a F-150 that we're building a camper for. Um, not going to be delivering until sometime in the summer, but it's a unique build. Changing things up on the camper a little bit, just so it's a little bit more conducive to the overall vision that the customer has. And uh, it's probably something we're going to do a little bit more of moving forward is some custom built stuff. But that being said, uh, we got fishing gear in the van, and that means that we're going fishing today. So we're going to head out to Sylvan Lake, like right away here. We've got the Deeper Pro, we've got the Shack we're probably going to set up. And we're just going to have a good time out on the ice and uh, bring in the holiday season with some perch fishing. If we can get on perch. Usually my perch game is weak, but we'll try and get on perch today. If not, we'll try and go for pike. Let's go. All right, everybody. We are just west of the Jarvis Bay Provincial Park in Alberta on Sylvan Lake. And Sylvan Lake is probably one of my favorite local fisheries. Uh, you can target walleye, burbot, whitefish, perch, pike, Generally, those are the top five out of here. Uh, and we are marking fish. So we got our deeper pro running. And as you can see, we got marks all over the bottom here. We're gonna rig up some rods and get down there. I've got two holes drilled. I got the deeper pro in this one and we're gonna be fishing out of this guy. We are still using the Woods Toaster 3. It's only minus one outside right now. So we're gonna leave the doors open, and get some ventilation in here. But it's quite warm, it's quite beautiful. We're on sitting on about five inches of ice, five to six inches of ice. So, totally safe, but let's stop burning daylight. Let's get down there and do some ice fishing. Okay, so the rods that we're going to be using today are just the generic HT. So we're going to use a HT Micro Series. That'll be our panfish setup. And then we're going to go for walleye and pike on the big guy. But first we're going to do some panfish. That's what I think is down there right now is a bunch of panfish, some perch. So I realized I didn't have my tool on me, so my Leatherman walked back to the, the van to grab a spare set of pliers so I could pull hooks. And then I remember that I didn't actually stake my shelter down. And thankfully there's no wind today, but if there was, we might have been looking for a, a shelter along the beach. So although it looks like very much the afternoon, borderline evening. It is only 2.30. That's how fast we lose light here in Canada in the winter time. But as soon as the winter solstice happens, which should be any day now, as soon as that happens, the days start getting longer. That's a beautiful thing for us Canadians. All right guys, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna do what I call a lollipop. So I've just taken a bunch of trout eggs and attached them to the bottom treble hood of this, treble hook of this little uh, ice spoon here. Uh, I can't remember who makes these exactly, but they are, they are pretty good. I've had good luck with them so far for pikes. So this is super small. Um, so we're gonna pretty well target everything between panfish and up. But as you can see, it's getting quite quiet on the graph. So I want something flashy that I can move around and that will bring fish in. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna get that guy back down the hole like that. You see that mark right there? That's what we're going for. You can kind of see the ball. You can kind of see my jig right there. What we'll do is keep jigging the spoon and uh, then we'll re-rig up the, oh yeah, see we just, bottom of that water just went dead silent. Oh, are we on? 
No. The bottom of that water just went like dead, dead silent. There's no marks at all right now. Which means either something big is coming in. Oh, there's a little guy there. Oh, fish on, guys. Feels walleye like. Oh, it's a pike. There we go, guys. Sylvan Lake Pike. Hey, not a bad size. Let's get him back in the water. First fish through the ice here at Sylvan Lake. We've only been fishing now for maybe 20 minutes. Lots of action on the graph, though. Uh, there was a ton of bait fish, um, like almost a cloud on that deeper pro. Um, and then it kind of went quiet, and then boom, that pike snapped. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Oh, oh no. Lost it, guys. And that thing came up right from the bottom to get it. I wonder if I can get him again. I'm just going to get right straight back down there and see if I can't pick them up again. They're all stacked up on the bottom right now. I was only halfway down the water table and that thing came up, which means whatever it was with either a pike or a walleye, and the reason I think that is because the pike and the walleye, they'll sit at the bottom of the lake and their eyes are almost, they're sort of at the top of their head so they can look up and um, so they can see bait fish swimming around them and they'll just sit at the bottom and as fish, as fish uh, swim above them, they'll run up from underneath of them and, and get them. And so that's what happened is, is a, a predator fish saw something above him and just went for it. Oh, man, I was busy dicking around with the camera to get that on camera and uh, lost it. Man, I even got him to the top of the hole. He was at the hole, and that's when I lost him. Those are the most painful ones. I did just close up the door. It's getting a little cold out, so I have a lot of good luck with just not getting skunk. I don't think I've I don't think I've hit my limit uh, too many times, but I usually catch fish. Might not be a lot, but I usually get on them. When I'm fishing, I also kind of take into account fishing for food, right? Like when I come out fishing, I'm basically uh, taking my skills and, and making sure that my skills stay sharp enough that if I have to, um, I can I can catch food for, for my family uh, year round. That's the purpose behind having a boat. That's the purpose even behind having all this fishing gear and coming out fishing and, uh, and learning um, how to properly fish, uh, both through the ice and through the water. Um, it's a skill as much as anything else. And if you don't, uh, if you don't hone that skill and and give it the the attention that it deserves, then you can easily forget those skills. Yeah. See, now our graph is stone cold Steve Austin. Over here on the other side, I've got my my medium action with eight to ten pound mono on it, and I'm just jigging a basic a, pl a plastic sunfish with oh oh we're on we're on oh baby we're on oh my goodness oh okay oh yeah oh that's a good what do we got here pike feels pikey oh yeah guys <laughs> all right all right it's a pike day i guess oh that's a decent pike man so there you go guys, that's that's exactly what I said I was jigging on, this a little plastic sunfish. That was beautiful. All right guys, I'm gonna show you this fish real quick and we'll get him back in the drink. There we go. Hey, beautiful northern pike. Not a big guy, not a big guy, but a beautiful, beautiful specimen nonetheless. I just love the coloring on these guys. Absolutely beautiful fish. Looking really healthy, no bleeding, nothing, but you can see these guys are just formidable predators. You can kind of see those eyes. You see how they're sort of at the top of the head that helps them look up. So although the panfish is what we were actually targeting, we were sitting at about 4.3, 3.5 meters up, higher up onto the water table. And that pike must have come out from outside of the scope range of our, of our deeper because 
he didn't show up on the scope at all and uh just smashed that it's a good thing we checked that uh that rod because that's exactly what what need that fish needed to attack it was just it was probably staring at it and uh wasn't too sure what to make of it and then as soon as it saw it move it was like that thing's living i'm hungry let's go get it awesome awesome i'm not gonna i'm not gonna argue with uh with catching fish i don't care what they are but i do want to try and get some perch So we're going to take our jigging, our jigging grub and get back down there and see if we can't entice these little buggers to bite. You know, they're, if you ever start, if you, if you have never fished before and you want to get into it and you're not sure how to target species, get yourself a uh, $30 $30 rod set up. Oh, we got fish coming up again. And uh, get yourself a $30 ice rod set up. Get yourself some plastic baits, like some jig heads and some plastic baits. And just uh, go out into the water and uh, drill a couple holes. And, you know, you're, you're, I mean, in Alberta, at least, you're definitely likely to, to land some pike. And uh, they're a great fish. They can get absolutely massive. So they're really fun to catch when they get really, really big. They're a decent fight. They are kind of lazy. I mean, you're going to get, you know, if you're pulling out of deep water, you're going to get some nice, fun head shakes, and it's going to feel like a really fun fight. Um, but they are very slimy. So if you're not, uh, if you're if you're queasy when it comes to texture, uh, pike are very, very slimy. They do have scales, though, um, and they're also good eating. I know a lot of people don't like pike, but between you and me, um, I will actually, I will actually prefer pike over burbot, and burbot, and that's that's a rare, that's it's not a normal thing to say, but because burbot around here they call it the land lobster, it does not taste anything like lobster. I don't care what anybody else has to say. Um, it's a bottom feeder fish, just like a lobster would be, but the the meat is, it's 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 very gamey um, for a fish. It's very fishy tasting. Whereas pike, I have found, is um, it's a little bit more forgiving. Oh, there we go. No, did I lose him? Oh, no, I got him. <laughs> uh, you know what, guys? If we were allowed to fish live bait, that would be a beautiful live bait fish. Look at this little guy. He's tiny, but perch, they have those little spikes at the top. And these two back here are really, really difficult. They're really, really, really sharp. Um, that thing is absolutely tiny, man. That's like a one bite brownie. All right, little guy, go yonder. As I was saying, I don't, I, I can't catch perch worth crap. I catch probably the smallest fish in this entire lake. <laughs> uh, but in my defense, guys, that was that was a perch. So now we just need to find his big brothers and big sisters and get them to be as hungry and curious as the other guy was. Yep. All right. Another perch. Really light. Oh yeah, that's a better. That's a better size. That's not a jumbo by any stretch, but but we see. Oh, those are sharp. Come on. Here we go. Another baby perch. See those spikes again? Those get real sharp. Push away. If you guys, uh, if you don't follow us on social media, on Instagram specifically, uh, you'll see we made a bunch of uh, posts about the Yucapac campers. Uh, big news, guys. We did land uh, Overland Garage as an install location, as well as Red Bear Outdoors in Ontario as an install location. So if you've been looking for a camper, 
um, for your ultralight, like an ultralight canopy style camper, um, head over to our website at www.blindmanoverland.com. That website's going to be changing dramatically very soon. We're launching a new website, a bunch of new gear. We're launching uh, really cool truck canopies as well, just the canopies, like structural canopies, as well as uh, some rooftop tents that are 100% Canadian made. Um, so super stoked to be offering those things, guys. And if you're an outdoorsman or you're looking for a Canadian made quality uh, outdoor product, I'm not going to lead you guys astray. Blind Man Overland is the way to go. Uh, I take a big amount of pride in what we do and we're constantly growing we're growing our uh, retail network we're growing in the in the in the products that we offer um, there are some American some awesome American manufacturers that are moving into the Canadian market and being oh there we go being one of the first oh I lost them no I didn't yeah I did oh my goodness guys these things are just tiny just tiny little guys these are bait fish bro being that we were one of the first to do this in Canada, if not the first, <clears throat> um, I really do. Uh, I really do want to make sure that we we stay at the forefront of people's mind. And the best way I can do that is to stay as active as I can on socials. And oh, oh, hello. But yeah, and and one of the best ways I can do that is to stay active on socials and really help and encourage you guys to uh, to interact with us in the comments. So. You know, on our Instagrams, on our socials, uh, on our YouTube, you know, say hi. Um, if you guys like what we're doing, if you don't like what we're doing, you know, feel free to feel, feel free to tell us in the comments because, you know, it, like I said, it really, really does help us. When it comes to campers, uh, you're just going to get more camper out of a Yucapac camper. You know what, guys? There's a massive line that just dove straight down into that pile of perch and i'm wondering if that was a pike or a walleye that happened to see a whole school of perch under and just beelined it to them uh that being said though i'm also curious what kind of youtubers do you guys watch and uh why do you like them why do you like blind man overland even you know tell me tell me down in the comments what really works for you guys do you like the fishing stuff do you like the the adventure factory stuff there's so many of you guys that are absolutely awesome. When I meet you guys in real life, you're all just, you guys inspire me so much to just keep up fighting, keep fighting the good fight. And uh, I just really want to appreciate, I just really want to say thank you for that. I don't I don't think we would have been anywhere near where we would if I didn't have the support that I have from the community here. So we're, uh, we're a small but tight community here. And if you want to join, hit that like and subscribe button. It really is the coolest and the most beneficious, super fragilistic way to help uh, grow our presence here on YouTube and throughout the interweb. I'm telling you guys, make no mistake, you will see Blind Man Overland, a household name. It's going to happen. That's my belief. And uh, you guys can all make it happen. All right, guys, we are losing daylight fast. It is. What time is it right now? It is 4.38. We have been out here now for, I would say, two and a half hours. And as far as the fishing goes, uh, I've probably caught, I mean, I've caught however many perch I caught on camera. Um, and then I caught like six or seven other small, super small perch. Um, barely even counts, but we're going to count them. And then the two pike, the two decent sized pike. If, uh, if we were fishing for food, we wouldn't be going hungry for a couple of days. So awesome, awesome day of fishing. We're gonna, we're gonna fish until this light is done. Uh, and then we're gonna pack up and head back to the van. But as far as the video goes, uh, we're gonna end it here because we've only got like 10% left. So uh, as always guys, live free, be wild. Thank you for watching. Uh, a very Merry Christmas to everybody. Because I believe that's like six or seven days away as well. And then we got the new year coming up. So just as a reminder, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, I'm going to encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to help us grow. Uh, and if you like this stuff, put down in the comments what you think we should do next. Do you think we should keep fishing uh, Silver Lake? Should we go check out Pigeon Lake? Should we check out Crimson Lake? Lots of beautiful fisheries in Alberta to explore. The ones that we explore most often just happen to be the closest ones. Um, but all in all, I'm still, fingers crossed, for a for a walleye today if we do end up getting onto one we'll make sure we keep enough battery for that but ultimately guys 
This has been an absolutely great way to end the weekend. What a beautiful day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming fishing with me. Love it when you guys do that. Hit that like and subscribe button. Give us a follow, and we'll see you on the next one.